So back at MWC this year, Nokia launched a bunch of new Android smartphones like the Nokia 8 Sirocco and Nokia 7 Plus. These are pretty much all really great smartphones because they are based on the Android One platform, which uses a really minimal UI that takes advantage of a lot of different Google apps. They're also all based around jewelry, so they have this really fine design that looks pretty much completely different than any other Android phone on the market right now. And apparently this strategy is working out for them because they've sold a ton of phones since they relaunched less than two years ago, and now they're launching a new phone they like to call the Nokia 7.1. So the Nokia 7.1 is a pretty small phone, at least by today's standards. It's got a 5.84 inch display and the bottom bezel is a little bit big, but it still feels pretty compact compared to all the 6.4 inch phones that we've got on the market right now. Nokia is making a pretty big deal about this display and it's using a technology that they like to call pure view. Now, this really just means that it has a lot of dynamic range and it can play HDR content up to HDR10. It can also upscale regular content so that it basically works like HDR content. So you're gonna get a lot of more space between the blacks and the whites. Now HDR isn't exactly uncommon right now. A lot of the big manufacturers are using this tech in their flagship phones, but it's really nice to see Nokia putting the technology in a definitively mid-ranged phone. The body of the Nokia 7.1 feels awesome. They're saying it's 85% glass on the front and back, and the aluminum frame is carved from a single piece, and it really does just feel like a really nice piece of jewelry. They also managed to pack dual cameras into this phone, which isn't exactly uncommon anymore. It's 2018, but this is obviously used for things like portrait mode, and they've packed some pretty cool software magic in there, like enabling you to use the front and back cameras at the same time. So the outsides of this phone just look pretty nice and really seem like pieces of jewelry. The insides of this phone are definitively mid-ranged. In the US, you've got a Snapdragon 636, four gigs of RAM and 64 gigabytes of storage, but internationally, you're gonna be able to get a three gig of RAM and 32 gig of storage variant. And the Snapdragon 636 isn't a bad CPU at all. I mean, it's not gonna compete head to head against like the Snapdragon 845 or probably even the 835 for that matter. But for just general browsing and multitasking, it's probably gonna do you just fine. What this phone does have is a headphone jack though, which apparently is now reserved for mid-range and lower end options, but I'm definitely not complaining here. So with that weird interaction between a really premium body and kind of mid-range specs, it is probably a little bit hard to tell how much this phone is gonna cost. Nokia decided to price this at $350, and I think that's a pretty decent price. I mean, it's not gonna compete with like the Poco phone, obviously, but this is just an entirely different market. Nokia is definitely targeting this at people who want a really nice and premium phone, but don't really care about the speed. They just want it to look good and feel good and just generally perform pretty decently. So I only got about 20 minutes with the phone and I can't exactly draw conclusions based on that time, but we should be getting a review unit within the next few weeks and we'll be sure to put it through our paces and let you know what we think of it. Until then, leave your thoughts in the comment section below, drop your questions down there. I'll be sure to answer them the best way that I can, because of course, we are your source for all things Android.